Hey guys, welcome back. So today I am gonna go in with another tutorial because like why not? And I had been planning on doing this tutorial for a really long time. I just never got around to it as per usual, which is like very on brand of me. I always intend things and never get around to it, uh-huh. But um, I got around to it today. So I just went through and showed you guys my three-step Chanel bra routine. So I use Chanel products because that's just what I have on hand and that's just kind of what I'm used to. And just in case anybody was really curious when it comes to how to do Chanel brows, here's a video for it. But um, if you guys have products that are comparable, which the makeup market is so expansive, there are definitely products that are comparable. So if there are any of these three products that you guys have a dupe of, or if you guys have something that is similar to these three products that you like, go ahead and use this. But this technique is exactly what it is. It's just a technique, and so it is applicable to any brand, any product that you choose to use. Today, I'm gonna be using the um, the Tinted Brow Gel in brown or in brune in 370, and then I'm gonna go in with a brow pencil, and then I'm gonna go in with a clear brow gel. So for example, if you have the Tinted Benefit Brow Pencil with like an Anastasia brow pencil with an Anastasia brow gel or whatever you have, like these steps will still work with your products. It's just, of course, you know, a lot of my videos are centered around Chanel, so, you know, it just works out that way. But I am open to doing a different brow routine using the same techniques on, with different brow products if you guys are interested. Because I don't know if you guys know this, but for those of you who have been around, you guys might know, for those of you who are new, um, my favorite brow pencil is actually from Tom Ford. So I can actually show you, you know, the similar steps that I take, but using the Tom Ford brow pencil if you want. Um, but yeah, so if you guys are interested in how I achieve these brows using Chanel products. Stick around. If not, thanks for stopping by anyway. But yeah, let's hop into it. Okay, yes, I'm still in my pajamas, but otherwise I have everything on save for brows. So we're gonna go in and do that. I'm just gonna zoom you guys in a little bit. Okay, so I am gonna go in with three products today. Um, and the first one that I'm gonna go in with is the Le Gel Sourcil Longwear Eyebrow Gel. And honestly, you can do this with any three products of similar caliber because I know other companies do sell products like this. So if you find like brow gels that are not Chanel that you like, this technique will work for other brands as well. But today, I'm gonna do like a Chanel-centric one, just so you guys see. So I'm gonna use the brow gel in Brune. So the key is to go in with a tinted brow gel first. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and brush through my eyebrows with the brow gel. And what that does is it kind of maps out my brows. First of all, it brushes everything out so that I have a general shape of my brow and that I kind of get like a better understanding of my face and the way it's gonna frame. And again, the beauty about layering and doing techniques such as these, um, aka layering, is that depending on how your brows are, you can pretty much stop at any point. So if you have fuller brows, you can technically just go in with this tinted brow gel like this. You can kind of call it a day if you want. Like if you have pretty full brows, I'm pr I would say that this is like the only step that you need. So already you can kind of see a difference like between this one and this one. This one has no brow gel on it, this one does. It's just a little more lifted, um, the hairs are a little more in place and there is just slightly more volume to it. Um, there's obviously more tint, more color, so that helps. I'm gonna go in and do the same with this one. So I really like to brush my brows upward so that all the hairs can kind of fall into place where they need to be. And that way, like I said, I get a very good shape of like the arch and where I need to fill in the sparse areas, which is gonna be my next step. So the point of this step is, again, just to kind of get like a really good shape of my brow going um, to make sure that the hairs lay in the right direction. And that way I can do less work when it comes to filling in the actual brow. So, I mean, every step I feel has its own importance in its own way, but 
I mean, I feel like just from my experience, the better that I do each step, the less work I have. So the better that I tint my brows with a brow gel, the less work I have to do filling them in with a pencil. So if you have fuller brows, if you have like the thickest brows of life and you don't really need to fill them in per se, like honestly, you can just go in with a brow gel, a tinted brow gel, like brush it through your brows real quick and just call it a day. But my brows, like they exist, but I feel like they need just a little more definition to them. So that's what I'm gonna do. So the next item that I'm going to use is the um, eyebrow pencil and this one is the um, crayon sourcil. This is the sharpenable one, not the mechanical one. Um, the mechanical one, I've always had reservations about it. Um, even when Anastasia first came out with theirs, I love the concept because I was like, oh my god, it's kind of like having, you know, the mix between a pomade and um, a classic brow pencil, except like, you know, it's already in the shape of a brow brush for you. I'm like, and I just love the mechanic behind it, but I don't know, like, the more that I try it, the only one that I like so far is the Tom Ford one and just because I feel like they got the mechanism down right and because it does have the sharpening application. Otherwise, like, when it dulls down, it becomes very difficult to obtain a precise brow. Um, with this brow pencil in particular, I feel like it just helps me achieve a very precise brow and my brows just look a lot more fuller and a lot more natural without looking too sculpted. I don't know, like, this one just gives me a softer but fuller but structured brow, if that makes sense. So I'm just gonna go with my, with my brow pencil and what I'm gonna do, am I close enough? Maybe a little closer? No, all you guys are getting is brow. Okay, that's fine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and just kind of outline underneath my eyebrows. very lightly. And I'm just gonna follow the natural arch that I have. I'm not gonna create one, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm literally just following the line that I naturally have as a brow. See, nothing exciting. My first step is always kind of mapping and it's always really gonna be just mapping out my brow. When they say that your brows are meant to look like sisters, not twins, um, take it seriously because nothing in nature is perfectly symmetrical. So it's okay for your brows to not be perfectly symmetrical. Like, it's fine. Okay, so now that I have both of my brows just kind of lined underneath, um, I can start filling upwards. So you see where I have a sparse area in this general region? I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in slightly with just feathery strokes. I have my brow at an angle. I'm not going straight forward because that would create a very harsh line. I have it sideways and I'm doing very feathery strokes. I'm doing more shading than I am coloring. Okay, and then I'm gonna go in and do the same on this side. You see how it's kind of like sparse in this area? And in this area, I'm just gonna go ahead and address that okay so far as you guys can see I've worked very low when it comes to my brow I definitely have most of the color concentrated on the bottom of my brow which is kind of what I want now we're finally gonna address the top and that's why we brushed our brows upward to get the general outline of what the shape is going to look like so I'm gonna take the highest point of my brow which is here and since there's a sparse area here, I'm gonna go ahead and take my pencil and just address that. See, so I haven't done much. I've just kind of evened out. I've just kind of, like, all I'm really doing is kind of evening out areas that were lacking. Okay, so the overall shape of my brow has been established. I'm gonna leave the inner part of my brow untouched for now, and I'm gonna go move on to the other side. So again, I see the highest point of my brow kind of reaches up here, and I just wanna even that out a little bit, so. Over the moon, thinking 
When I was younger, my mom always told me that the point of makeup isn't to create what you don't have, but to complement what you already have. And I didn't quite understand that when I was little. But as I got older um, and have gone through that like intense phase of, you know, just really intense makeup, I kind of understand now. Like it's just easier to apply makeup when I kind of focus on what I already have versus trying to create what I don't have. Makeup just tends to be your best friend more so when you use it to compliment you than to change you. That sounded so philosophical, oh my god. I sound so woke. <laughs> Is that still a thing, woke? Is that like still a thing or am I like, did I just age myself? I'm not even that old, but like old enough to realize that I'm just not hip anymore. General shape of my brows are done, but they are looking a little intense. And at this point, I like to go in with a spoolie and just diffuse a little bit of what I laid down. Again, just to give me a more natural approach so that it doesn't look so like, I don't like that. Like, I don't like it when things look a little too structured because nothing on your face should be harsh. Harshness is very masculine. If you think about things that have lines and angles, um, they tend to be like men. Men have a lot of, you know, very, you know, just masculine jaw lines and harsh lines and stuff like that, like a bold brow, that's all very masculine. So just to kind of, again, soften things up and make it a little more feminine, I like to brush things through to just soften everything up again. So continuing towards our final step, I left the inner portion of both of my brows kind of empty. So I'm gonna go in and address that last final bit. And as you can see, like my brows have softened up, you know, more than what it was like two seconds ago. So from there, from here, what I'm gonna do is kind of, now I'm gonna take my brow pencil and kind of hold it upward and I'm gonna start flicking upwards. And I'm that's how I'm gonna draw little hairs. I think I I feel like this method just makes the brow portion of my makeup routine less dreadful. I Overall, I don't like doing eyebrows. Like, it's my least favorite part of my makeup routine. That's why, like, in every tutorial, I skip it. And this is, like, my first official tutorial with eyebrows in general um, because I realized I've never done one. And I just, this is the easiest way I've come to realize to do it. So I just kind of want to share it with everybody who also dreads brows and dreads makeup. <laughs> um, obviously, because I'm showing it on camera, like it takes a little longer, but when I do it by myself, it takes literally like 60 seconds at most. So I have addressed the inner portion, but again, see, it's looking very structured and I don't like that. So I'm gonna go in with my spoolie again and just really diffuse, especially the inner portion of it. I like to point my spoolie vertical and just really go in gently where my brows meet my foundation and just kind of diffuse that portion. And now my brows look just at least a little more reasonable. <laughs> and then if you notice any sparse areas that like, you know, after you spoolie everything out and you notice that like, you know, there are any sparse areas, just go in and you know, address those areas again so that they look a little more full or whatever. And then if you feel like there was one portion where you went a little too heavy handed, just go in with your spoolie and just really address that area. Honestly, a lot of times our problems with our eyebrows can be fixed by just like some hardcore spoolie-ing. Okay, final step, what you're gonna do is go in with a clear brow gel. So I'm just gonna go in with the Chanel clear brow gel. It is literally in the same color and same packaging as the brown one that I had. It's just, it's clear. So this one is a brown one. It is tinted. And then I'm gonna go in with the clear one, which is gonna look tinted because I've been using it for a while now. It's just old and it's a little tinted because I made it tinted, but like it's not really tinted guys. So go in with a clear brow gel of choice and then you're gonna go in and address your brows one last time. And just to make sure that the structure that you laid down before didn't collapse, especially the brow hairs on the inner corner. Those tend to collapse the most on me. So I like to make sure that they are really held up and secured where they're supposed to be. 
And yeah, that's how I freaking do my brows. Now I'm gonna go change. I'll be right back. Okay, I have changed. You guys are probably gonna see me in this top multiple times because I plan to film multiple videos today. But um, I hope you guys enjoyed that brow routine. Brow, brow. I hope you guys enjoy that brow routine. Jeez. I hope you guys find that video helpful. I know. Well, for me, brows are not the most exciting part of my routine by any means. So I hope this kind of simplified what can be a seemingly daunting um, aspect in your makeup routine. Um, but three simple steps and per usual at any point you can stop. So that's the beauty of layering. But as always, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys again next time. Bye.